Good morning. Good to see you all. That is great. Let me just kind of look around here a little bit. I see, uh, I see some faces I don't know, and so we're really glad that you're here. I see some faces I haven't seen in a while, and so glad that you're back and uh, back with us. Always good to see we are the Shakota Church of Christ, and I wish you a happy Easter. I know today is a day that our uh, country and other countries celebrate as a, as a secular holiday, and so happy Easter to you, and uh, glad that people are thinking about Christ. Of course, we, we celebrate Christ every Sunday here, so you don't have to just come only on, on Easter and Christmas. You're welcome every Sunday. We're here, and uh, we, uh, we enjoy studying the Word of God. And so let me encourage you to get a Bible in front of you somehow. If you didn't bring one, there's probably one right there in the pew in front of you. And if you'll open that up, and you can turn that to Psalms. We're going to be in Psalms the whole morning. And so you, if you find it once, you'll be able to find all the, the places we're going to be looking at. And then also inside the bulletin is an outline of the sermon. If you get that out, you'll know which passage we're turning to next, and you can fill in the blanks. They'll all be up here on the screen. As we talk about blessed, how many of you have a shirt or a blouse or something that says blessed on it? Quite a few of you do. There's a lot of you that do. I see that, uh, quite a few of those around. Uh, what do you think of when you see that word Blessed. What, what message are you trying to, uh, to say when you wear that uh, blessed? It's a, it's a word that we hear a lot about, even in the secular world, even non-religious people, they talk about blessed. Well, we were blessed with this or that. What is blessed? You know, you, there, I read one dictionary definition that it means happy. Well, the Bible says, blessed are those who mourn. So, happy are those who mourn? That doesn't quite fit, does it? When we bless our meal, does that mean you want a happy meal? Is that what you're trying to do? Or, you know, what, what does it mean? Blessed is happy? Uh, surely that word doesn't quite uh, tell the whole story, does it? Some say it means to be gifted or pronounced, to, to have an abundance well, okay, maybe a little bit of that. Uh, the word that I found that maybe comes the closest to blessed is fortunate. To be fortunate. To have the favor. In our case, to have the favor of God. That's something that certainly we, we want to have. And so, be thinking about that. This idea of being blessed. Some people talk about being blessed, and others talk about how awful things are. Have you ever been around a person that just every time you're around them, how are you? Oh, well, the old gout's kicking in again, and you know those corns I got rid of last week? Well, they're back, you know, and just everything that could possibly be wrong, they're focused on that, always focused on the ne negative. The fact is we all have good things and bad things going on in our lives all the time, and you can focus on how terrible things are, or you can really step back and look at how blessed we truly are. And I want to share with you some things from the book of Psalms that talk about just how blessed we really are. So let's get into our first one here. I want to point out that we are blessed to be in a country where we can worship freely. In Psalm chapter 33, hopefully you've turned there already. Psalm 33. Let's read together in verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom He has chosen for His own inheritance. You know, we truly are blessed to be in the United States of America. You know, we, we have a lot of, of freedom here. We are free to assemble as we are right now without having to worry about them busting down the doors and arresting us for being Christians. That happens in other nations, even today, around the world. There are places where Christians have to meet secretly. We're very blessed in that way. We... We're fairly safe. 
I, I don't suspect that Shakota is going to get bombed this week. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I don't, we don't have to worry about that too much, whereas other countries, that's just kind of part of life. There's war-torn countries where they don't know, you know, one, one day to the other, whether they're going to suffer some kind of an attack from another nation. Uh, we have enjoyed some peace in the United States for a long, long time. We don't seem to be as grateful for that as, as I think we should be. We're blessed to be in this country. We're, we're blessed that we have some say-so about some of the policies and the laws that are made in our country. And so we are truly blessed in that way. Let's look at another one. We're blessed with good health and with our, our nourishment, our food. In Psalm 41... Just flip a couple of pages over there to chapter 41. And let's read the first three verses together. Psalm 41, starting in verse 1, says, How blessed is he who considers the helpless. The Lord will deliver him in a day of trouble. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive. And he should be called blessed upon the earth. And do not give him over to the desires of his enemies. The Lord will sustain him upon his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to health. You know, we really are blessed to have the degree of health that we have. And I know that there's some that uh, we just mentioned in our prayer list. There's some that are hurting, that are ailing. And uh, uh, some have uh, recently been through a time of pain and hurt. But when you think about it, for the most part, we are really blessed to have the health that we do. We're blessed to have the food that we do. In Psalm 111, Psalm 111, you think, man, this is a big book. Psalm 111, and we'll start in the second verse reading together. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. We really are blessed that we have food, not Many of us probably are worried about whether we're going to get to eat today. Some of us are more worried about which restaurant it's going to be that we're going to go to. Well, we ate at that one last week. <laughs> you know, we, we're pretty fortunate when we look around and see others. Uh, we're fortunate to have food, shelter, our homes, uh, transportation, there's a lot of ways that God has blessed us physically, and we need to be thankful for those. Of course, He has blessed us spiritually, too. Let's look at that. We are blessed to receive salvation, the forgiveness of our sins. Going back to chapter 32 of Psalms. Psalm 32, and look with me, please, at the first two verses. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. We're so blessed, as he says here, to have our transgressions forgiven. Your transgression is when you violate the laws of God. God created you to live a certain way when you sin, when you commit sexual immorality, or you gossip, or you lie, or you are prideful, or many other things that we do. You're sinning, you're transgressing the law of, of God. And that guiltiness is with you, it stays with you until you have that washed away by the blood of Christ. If you've done that, you're so blessed. Do you realize how blessed you are? That if you died right now and, and went to, to the gates of judgment, 
Those sins that you've been committed will not be held against you. What a blessing that is. Just stop and think about that. Unless, of course, you're, you're not in Christ, well, then you, you don't have that blessing. And I, uh, we're hoping that you will change that, that you will get right with God. But if you have had your sins washed away, you're so blessed right now. Just as he says here, our, our transgressions are forgiven. Our sin is covered. How blessed we are. The Lord does not impute iniquity against us. That means when we get to Judgment Day and Satan is accusing, do you, do you know what Curtis did? Remember he did this back then and he did this, yeah? And I'm not going to have anything to say because all I can do is plead guilty, right? But my defending attorney is going to be there. His name is Jesus. And he's going to step up and he's going to say, Now, Father, yeah, Curtis did those things. But I died in his place. And I do not, you cannot impute iniquity against him. Isn't that going to be wonderful? What a blessing that is. You know, just stop and think about that. We are so blessed to have that. Let's look at another one here. We're blessed to be able to speak to the Father through prayer. I know, I skipped the scripture, didn't I? I'll get it later. We read it in the scripture reading anyway, so. Let's look at chapter 34. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And let's do look at the second one in Psalm 66. Psalm 66. And verse 20. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness from me. The psalmist says we're so blessed. We have a God. He doesn't turn his loving kindness away from us. Even when we are unlovely, <laughs> even when we are not worth loving, God still loves us. And even when we don't deserve to be heard by God, he still hears our prayers. What a blessing that is. What an amazing thing to have a God that says, hey, you need to speak to me, you come talk to me. And we say, well, do I need to make an appointment? And he says, no, come anytime, wherever you are, whenever. You can pause right where you are anytime and pray and talk to me and I will hear you. Now, if you're praying when you're driving, don't close your eyes, all right? That's not a good thing. But you can pray when you're driving. Just keep your eyes open. You can pray anytime, anywhere. What a tremendous blessing that is to be able to pray to God. Let's look at another one. We are so blessed to have God's Word to guide our way. The very first psalm, turn back to Psalm chapter 1. Aren't these psalms great? Man, I love the Psalms. Look how the very first Psalm starts off. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the paths of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. How blessed we are. We don't have to listen to the counsel of the wicked. We don't have to listen to that bad advice that people give. That friend you have that keeps telling you the wrong thing. You don't have to listen to that. We are blessed to have the Word of God, the laws of the Lord to meditate on. And then in chapter 40, look at Psalm chapter 40. You must already be there. I don't hear any pages wrestling. You hear that or you're all on your cell phones. I don't know. One of the two. <laughs> Psalm chapter 40 and verse 4. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and is not turned to the proud nor to those who lapse into falsehood. <laughs> I love the way that's word. La who lapses into falsehood? Liars. <laughs> that's what that means. That's a, that's a politically correct way of saying you're a liar. 
There's people out there that lie, that tell you false things. There's false information out there. We're so blessed to have the Word of God. We don't realize how blessed we are that we have that. We're blessed to hear the Word of God. The Word of God is preached from this pulpit last Sunday evening, Kosi Mofu was here, who is our missionary from Zimbabwe, and he preached the Word, and we were so blessed to hear that. What a blessing that is. Sometimes we, don't, uh, uh, we miss out on those opportunities to hear these people like, like Kosi. He spoke about the Zimbabwe mission. Uh, sometimes we have our campus ministries come, like the River Hawks for Christ, who are out of Tahlequah. They came down. We have the EOS SC. They come in on Sunday. We have Blaine Anderson that comes in from the World English Institute. You know, I was told that sometimes uh, we have members that say, oh, well, I don't really want to come then because they're, they're always talking about money and they're always wanting support. Well, you know, when they come here, all these people that come, we tell them, Go ahead and ask us for the money. We, we know that's why you're here. We know that you have a ministry that needs support. But preach a sermon. Preach a sermon. All of them do that. I just want you to know, if you haven't been coming, that's one thing that the elders told me to tell them. I tell them all. Man, Kosi did that, didn't he? Those of you who are here, he preached a sermon, didn't he? He told us. He told us uh, about the work, and that's what we wanted to know. We're already supporting him, so he didn't say, you know, I need support. He just said, uh, thank you for supporting us. And then he preached the Word of God. I know this myself because I do that. I'm now a a church relations representative for BibleTalk.tv. And speaking of blessings, if you don't have this app on your phone, you may want to download that. Because this is a great way to hear sermons and classes throughout the the week. I know we have several members. I I myself, I'm on it almost every day, just looking stuff up. It's a great resource. BibleTalk.tv, make sure you check that out. But I go to other congregations to raise support for Bible Talk because we put that out online for free. Everything on there is free. It goes around the world. We have 150,000 subscribers to Bible Talk. We don't charge them anything. They can download the sermons. Listen to them. They can download the the uh, the PDF of the workbooks that go with it. Everything's for free. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have to rely on congregations to help support and individuals too. We have several individuals that are are generous. Well, when I go, I preach the word of God, and so we get to hear the word of God. What a blessing that is. You know, John chapter 8, verse 32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, where do we get the truth? John chapter 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So every time we get to hear the word of God, we get the truth. What a blessing that is. You know, think about what a blessing it is to know where the world came from, how it all began, and why we're here. There's a lot of people that don't even know, they, or they, they hear theories, philosophies of men, what some, some uh, expert on some subject is trying to tell them. We know the truth. We know why we exist. We know when, the, when this world ends. We know what will happen, because the Bible tells us. What a blessing it is to know those kind of things. When we have problems in our lives, We know what the answers are from the Word of God. We don't always follow the answers, do we? But but at least we are blessed to know what the answer is. Think about the people that don't have the Bible or don't read the Bible. They have no clue. Something happens in their life like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Guess I, I don't know. I'll just make something up. We're blessed. We're so blessed to have the Word of God to guide us. Don't take that blessing for granted. Let's look at another one here. We are blessed to have a loving Father who will reprimand us when we need it. This one may surprise you a little bit, but look at Psalm 94. I think this is a a good point that the psalmist makes. Psalm chapter 94. Read with me verse 12. Blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Now this is a blessing we don't think about a lot, but we are so blessed that God reprimands us. 
He corrects us when we're wrong. He comes down and he says, Curtis, you're messing up. Stop doing that. I am so grateful. I am so blessed to have a God that will do that. You know, it doesn't do any good to have a God that says, ah, you're fine. Just keep doing that. Yeah, you're all right. Keep going down that, that long, dark, wrong path. <laughs> Our God doesn't do that to us. What a blessing it is to have a God who reprimands us. When's the last time you thanked God for reprimanding you? You should. God does that because he loves us. The Bible is full of examples of people who were on the wrong path. They're going the wrong way and God reprimanded them or sent a prophet to reprimand them and get them back on the right path, change their whole life. We are so blessed to have that. Let's look at another one. We are blessed to be adopted as God's children into God's family. Look at Psalms chapter 65. Psalm 65, verse 4. How blessed is the one whom you choose and bring near to you to dwell in your courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. We are so blessed to be part of God's family, to be chosen. You know, God reaches down. He says, I want you to be part of my family. 1 John chapter 3 talks about this in verse 1. It says, how, how great a love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. That's what he says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. What a blessing it is to be part of the family of God. Don't take that for granted. If you are a Christian today, if you are a child of God, you're chosen by Him to be part of His kingdom. What a blessing that is. And along with that, let's be even more specific. We are blessed to be part of the Shakota Church of Christ. Amen? What a blessing it is to be part of this church body in Psalm 84. Let's look at that one. Psalm chapter 84. Is this too many scriptures? No, nah, there's no such thing as too many scriptures, is there? No, these are good. All these blessings we're reading about. Psalms chapter 84, verse 4. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. How blessed is the man whose strength is in you. We are so blessed to dwell in the house of God. To be part of the Shakota Church of Christ. We have a lot of members here, several members, I, maybe I shouldn't say a lot, that have never been anyplace else. So they don't know what it's like other places. I've been other places where there's little tiny congregations. And it's, they struggle. It's hard. I've been places where we really don't have, didn't have much leadership. Been places where the, the congregation of people really didn't care whether we had church the next week or not. <laughs> you know, as sad as that sounds. We don't realize how blessed we are to be here. Kind of along with this, this next one. We're blessed with a strong and continuous leadership. In Psalms 106. Psalm 106. And look at the third verse with me. Psalm 106.3 says, How blessed are those who keep justice. Who is that? Leaders. Those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. You know, before I came here to preach, there was a man named Everett Dunn who preached here for 34 years. Good man. Everett Dunn was a good man. Still is a good man. He's still alive. Did a lot of good for this congregation. Loved in the community. A man who cared a great deal about what he did and how he did it. I remember talking one time with Everett. We are talking about the offering of all the funny things to talk about. We are talking about that check. You know how in a little while we're going to take up the offering? Do you fold your check to put it in the offering? I do. I, I fold my check over and put it in there. And I, I don't know why I do that. 
Everett wouldn't do that. Do you know why? Because he says, if you fold it, somebody has to unfold it. <laughs> That's the way Everett Dunn thought, okay? He's always thinking about other people. He cared so much about other people. What a, a blessing this congregation had that man here for 34 years. We're blessed now to have two ministers, myself and, and Chase. And by the way, Chase Noah is a blessing to me to work with. I am so fortunate to have him as a colleague. And, we, and we're blessed as a congregation to have him here. We have two ministers. You know, a lot of congregations don't have a minister. Or they have to share a minister. Like, like there's a minister here and he has to work with the other congregation in the nearby town. And he's there sometime and he's here sometime. Man, we're blessed to have two ministers. We're blessed to have a strong eldership and have for many, many years in this congregation. The Shakota Church of Christ has been here for over 100 years, 1920 is when this, this congregation started. We've had strong elderships, and we have that continuously. They, and they work well together. And they genuinely care about the welfare of this congregation. And they're knowledgeable of the, of the Word. Our elders are all good Bible teachers because they know the Word of God. They attend, you know. Our, our elders attend church. I was talking just uh, about a month ago. There was a brother that called me and said, man, we're having this problem in the church, and, and I, 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 I'm not really involved, but I care about what's going on. I feel like I ought to do something. And I said, you need to get the elders involved. He says, I'd love to if they were ever here. <laughs> They're not here. They're hunting. They're fishing. They're going doing other things. They rarely attend. Our elders are here. They're almost all here today. I think we're missing one today. That's, that's all right. I'm sure he's got a good reason to not be here. But on nearly every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, our elders are all here. They set the pace in attendance. They practice what they preach. We're so blessed to have men like that. We're blessed to have our deacons. We've recently appointed five new deacons. They're good men. And they love the congregation, and they are serving, they're planning, they're organizing our work day, which is coming up. They sit in on the elders' meetings and, and kind of hear what's going on, and okay, what needs to be done. That's what deacon means. Deacon means servant. Our deacons serve. We're so blessed with that. We're blessed to have great teachers in this congregation at every age level. If you're visiting with us, and if you have children, you want your kids growing up in this congregation, believe me. I can introduce you to kids who grew up in this congregation and they grew up hearing the Word of God and loving God and loving being here. We have kids that if, if they don't get to come to Bible class, they're begging their parents, hey, I know I want to go. What do you mean we got to miss Wednesday night? They're telling their, their parents, no, we, we need to be there. We have great teachers. We have variety we have several adult classes that we offer. I mean, a lot of congregations don't have this. We just don't realize how blessed we are to be a part of the Shakota Church of Christ. All right, I'll go on. I could talk about that one forever. We are blessed to have several generations of our family living faithful to the Lord. In Psalm 112, Psalm 112, Listen to what the first two verses say here. Psalm 112, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord! How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in His commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. What does the Bible say is going to happen to the man who fears the Lord, who delights in the commandments? It says his descendants will also be strong. And that's exactly what we have here. We have generation after generation of people who care about the Lord. And we're raising our children up to care about the Lord, to fear the Lord, to love the commandments of God. And that's being passed on. And we're so fortunate. A lot of you here have relatives who are also here this morning and you get to it's like a big family reunion for you you have uh, children or you have parents or you have uh, brothers and sisters or aunts and uncles 
By the way, I'm not in that category. I don't know if you've thought about this or not. How many other heart sorns have you ever met in the Church of Christ someplace? <laughs> There's none. I was converted later in life. Same with Kathy. Uh, none of her family are members of the church. Despite our best efforts since we became Christians, you know, when we became Christians, our plan was, you know, our families are also going to love the, the church. They're going to come in. It didn't work that way. Our own children, unfortunately, right now are not even faithful to the church. We haven't given up on them. We still love them. But I'm not jealous of you, and you want to know why? Because I have family. You're my family. It's funny, when uh, I was uh, talking with, with Pam, who lost her husband, as you know, we did the, the funeral yesterday for Kenny, and uh, she said, I went to the, the ladies' luncheon, and I met your wife, and she's so sweet, and, and she brought her granddaughter. I'm thinking, her granddaughter? Who's the granddaughter? Well, it's Jaden, who's sitting next to Kathy right now. She, uh, Kathy went and picked her up from school and took her. And she is kind of our granddaughter. And, and Josiah and Joseph, they're like our grandkids. We love them. Uh, Chase and Sadie are like our kids, even though we're older than all of their parents, by the way. But that don't matter. Uh, they're like our kids. No, I have family. We're so blessed. We just don't even realize how blessed we truly are. Next one here. We are blessed with unity in our church family. And this is our last one. Let's look at Psalm 133. I didn't understand this for a long time. You know, it sounds like a sloppy mess, this oil dripping down on the beard. Let's read this with me. Psalm 133, verse 1 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon coming down upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, life forever. You know, the first time I, I read that, and they're dumping oil on this guy, and it's running down and on his beard and off on his robe, and I thought, this is pleasant? This is wonderful? Well, yes, it is, because the, the oil was what anointed you back in those days. And when they anointed Aaron to be the priest, they anointed him with that oil. And, and the beauty is the unity. Whenever the priesthood of the old covenant was established, everything centered around that and the service in the, in the temple there. Initially in the tent of meeting in the temple, that's where they were unified. And that unity was threatened at one point. And as we know, the nation of Israel divided. You had the ten northern tribes and the two southern tribes. But the ten northern tribes were up at Mount Hermon. The two southern tribes were down at Mount Zion. And so he talks about the dew mixing, the, the intermingling, the unity we are so blessed with unity here at the church. I'm back on the Church of Christ here in Chicago, aren't I? We are so blessed to be as unified as we are. Some have tried to steal our unity, and they failed. Some have tried to disrupt us. We don't put up with that here. You know, others come. And Acts chapter 20 is where Paul warned the elders in Ephesus. Says, Remember, they met there on the beach, and Paul says, Now I'm going to tell you, there's going to be savage woods going to come in. They're going to try to destroy the flock. He says, Even among your own number, there's going to be some that try to destroy the flock. Hebrews chapter 13 warns about a root of bitterness. Don't let a root of bitterness grow up among you. Some have tried to take our unity. They have failed. We're so blessed to be part of a well-established ministry with multiple layers of strength. You know, when Satan tries to punch this congregation, he is surprised to see it's not just elders, ministers, deacons, but we have so many in this congregation who care, who love the congregation, who are committed to unity, so when the gossipers come along and the backbiters, they say, hey, no, not here. We don't put up with that here. We love each other. We care about each other. We're not perfect people, but we love each other. We're trying our best to be the body of Christ. Do you see how much we have to be thankful for? So much. And I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to. I hope you realize we are truly a blessed people. We're so blessed. 
And you blessed me this morning just by being here. It is a blessing just to see you. You know, each time that we have a, a sermon, we offer an invitation. And you don't have to respond. Don't feel a pressure to do this. But this is an opportunity. We're going to sing a song here in a moment. If you've, you're visiting with us, you, you may not know how we do this. But we'll sing a song. Daniel's going to get up here in a moment. He's going to lead a song for us. And during that song, we'll all be standing. And you don't have to do this, but if you want to respond, if you feel like, I, I just want to uh, respond to this, I feel a need to do that, maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking, I, I'm hearing about all this blessing. I, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a part of the church. I want to be a part of that. I want to have my sins forgiven. You know, today you could believe, if you believe you can repent of your sins, you can be baptized into Christ. That can happen today. Or maybe you've already done that. Maybe you're in Christ, but you have been dwelling on the negative. You've not been the child of God that you know you need to be. You've not been his son. You've not been his daughter. You've, you've been acting disgracefully. Maybe you feel a need to respond. Whatever your need, please come as we stand and sing. <laughs>